the Thoughty OT podcast. I, th- I think a lot of people I've talked to, they have these really intense interests, skills, brilliant proficiencies, even at like very young ages. Um, but it's it's translating that into well, how can I make the most out of this? How can I craft my life around it? Um, and like what you're often, doing now. You're doing it now. Yeah. Well, it's, it's you know, I, I, I fill my life with things that I enjoy and I'm passionate about. Um, but I think it's also, you know, worth pay, paying attention to the fact that we, we, don't, we really don't have the support systems in place that could, for, for everybody, you know, they may come from um, sort of more of a low income background. You know, I'm quite privileged in the fact that I've had the ability to explore my um, interests and ideals. You know, I, I didn't pay for my Mac. My my parents bought it like quite a while ago for university. Not everyone gets to have that. Um, and some people really don't really have any options when it comes to employment. Um, sort of in the short term, they don't really see a way to, to realize that. Um, I think it's, it's, it's important because I mean, just thinking about the way that we, you know, if we're, if we're sort of going into like employment rather than being self-employed, I think, um, there is a very heavy emphasis on the deficit model when it comes to employment. Um, what are you bad at? (laughs) What can we, what can we, what can we improve that you're bad at? Um, and so they put all these adjustments in place and they're like, okay, so now it's tolerable. I can tolerate it. Great. That's that's that's, that's not a brilliant way to live your life, being no. tolerable of what you're doing. And I think one thing that the organization that I work for has done exceptionally well with is not having that deficit mindset and actually thinking, hey, look, hey, Thomas is really good at making videos and Thomas is really good at speaking and presenting why are we not why are we not getting involved in the areas of work that involve speaking and presenting and making videos and so yeah. they're, they're, i mean it's really hard because you know you have these job descriptions the employment sheets there um and you also have these governmental systems that are put in place um that kind of guide workplaces and when when you present something that could actually be beneficial for both you and the organization because it doesn't fit into that model they kind of dismiss it um and i think you you know i'm sure you've you've experienced things like that within employment and and if you're unspecialized the only thing you have to trade is your labor and yeah. when you're in that scenario you are susceptible to the dictates and the whims of a corporation mm-hmm entrepreneurship um entrepreneurship is great because the free market decides whether you're good or you're not and um what was i gonna say i was gonna say something i got one second sorry the the free market decides who's good and who isn't and it rewards exceptionalism and merit and i think it lends itself much better to us um like i say you know you know employers will make reasonable adjustments but I take quite a conservative outlook on things and I think that people um, can become the very best version of themselves if you remove the barriers out of the way and you know neurodiverse people need to realize that you're not defective there's nothing wrong with you you have some exceptional skills and just if you go with them and believe in yourself you can achieve pretty much anything I, I can't remember any time being totally honest, when I've received, when I've had any encouragement or support, everything I've done has been off my own volition mm-hmm. and my own and my own initiative. Um, I think it's all a mindset. If you if you think you can't, you won't, and if you think you can, you probably will. Yeah, and I, I, obviously there's, there's all sorts of you know personal sort of experiences and um privileges and and things that we can have in life that kind of give us a leg up and get us started um and i think a lot of people who don't have that opportunity and don't sort of 
have that sort of positive outlook on themselves and their skills, um, they can get into like their mid twenties and they can see everyone around them getting a job, moving out of their home, um, all of these ex- societal expectations, and they kind of mount up on on you. They kind of they push you down, and you're like they present this massive gap between what people are expecting you to do and what you're doing. Um, and sometimes it's just about <laughs> realizing that a lot of the stuff out there, a lot of the advice, a lot of the um, support out there, it's not geared towards us. It's not. It's, ge- it's geared towards everyone else. And when someone says that you should, you should not live with your parents because you're supposed to be an adult and you should be out at 18 and you should be working a job five days a week, getting the money in to survive. Um, <laughs> you, it, well, you're not. I mean, we have difficulties with, you know, we're disabled just by being autistic in a society that's not built for us. Um, Do you know something though, Thomas, like I'm going to play devil's advocate with you on that point because it's something that's really important to me. Um, And I've had this conversation a lot with people. I've received no privilege. If I'm from Stoke-on-Trent, it's one of the poorest wards in the country. I Mm -hmm. left school with no GCSEs. I had an undiagnosed disability. I was in brushes with the law more than once when I was younger. So I had every disadvantage that I was, uh, you know, I was, I was male. I'd got every disadvantage against me. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm great or whatever, but I think if you've got um, a belief that you can do better and you're willing to put the work in, I don't think anything is unattainable. Sure. Um, in, but like I said before, I'm only talking from my experience. It doesn't mean it's universally true. It's just what I have found true for me. That's all. Um, yeah, and I, and I, I, I agree with you. I think, I think all of these 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 privileges and things that we have they shorten the time scale of things. Like, um, you know, perhaps for me, I want to start a podcast. Right? Okay, my parents bought me a Mac. I can. I bought a microphone. Um, someone may not have that. They might have to work for a couple of years, get enough stable income to save enough, get a stable income to earn a Mac and then get to a point, you know, and so so they're always kind of, everyone's on like a different time scale. You can see YouTubers, people, um, celebrities out there age 21, age 18, um, pretty much at the height of their career and you can be like oh my god like i haven't even thought about which job i want to go for or you know or you might be the opposite and you might already have a plan set out and you might already be in motion and you might already have the resources that you need to do that um so i think there's just a really really important thing of knowing that in the long term if you work on it slowly and you chip away at what you want to to do you learn totally. things, you totally. reach out to supports, that you can make it. Maybe not in the time scale that you want to, 100%. but your time will come with time, just with that that grit and the delayed gratification. 100%. Um, and being aware that you're not living on the same time scale as your neighbor. Um, you know, that's Tom, important. Um, there's, there's loads of people who are like age, you know, age 50 who start their career um there and that they didn't do anything up until that point and it's i'm 40 this year and i can honestly tell you that only in like maybe the last three to four years have i really came into my most productive and successful period Mm -hmm. because you what you said was absolutely spot on it's about being consistent doing the same things again over a long period of time Mm -hmm. um that's what i think equates to a big win and that's what i found it's been I think all in all, I was in education for like 12 years, just mm-hmm. continually learning, 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 learning. And it's just about, uh, like I say, just having a, an idea of roughly where you want to go, setting a plan in place and then executing on that plan. I mean, I, you know, I work, I, I do, you know, it's, it is physiotherapy, but I do a lot of sort of like um, lifestyle coaching with people. Mm-hmm. And I say to a lot of them, okay, what do you want? And okay, like well, well, I, I want this. Um, I, I want to be happy. And I like, okay, well, what does happiness look like to you? Can you be specific? And they're like, uh, no. 
I think you have to have a very specific idea of what you want. And then when you have that, the rest all kind of falls into place and you have to yeah. be consistent in the way you work towards it. That's what I just tr- trudge on through the wilderness with no, no. direction. No. Like, you need to know where you're going, where exactly. you are, um, exactly. in order to make a... It doesn't need to be like a really highly specific, like a smart goal. You don't need to have this highly specific thing, but you could have, you know, at, at least a checklist, like a few bullet points. What? Do, where do I want to be in, you know, in, in, in the future? And not sort of basing that off what other people expect you to do in that time frame. It's not a race. Um, You've, what you no. said before, it's not a race. You're on your own time frame. And I think comparison can be the thief of joy sometimes because especially yeah. in this me- this age of social media, we're always looking around at what everybody else is doing and then reflecting that back to ourselves. You're on your own track and you're going to achieve it in your own time. Um, and I think that can be really um, that can be really beneficial to a lot of people just to focus on yourself on what you're doing. Yeah, and I think it's it's hard, isn't it? Because that people use you know people listen to this podcast, <laughs> listen to me and you talking about um, you know the the place that we're at now, and you know we we think because because the only people that we really see and the only person we we really hear are the people who have already met made it to a certain point where they're happy um with what they're doing and they've got things established but you, you the just by the nature of that you don't hear from the people who are in the works like there could be amazing people in the works right now nobody knows about them doing their thing building themselves up over a long period of time and then they get to a point and then they're successful and then people hear from them and then people um, see the 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 benefits of what they've sowed. Like you're not going to go up to a randomer who's at taekwondo that you don't know nothing about and say, "Wow, you're so great," even if even if they're not. Um, but you know, in the same vein, that person over time developing themselves, building, learning, they could be a world champion. They could be a national champion. They could be an international champion. They could be succeeding in these areas but you never know and it's we're only presented with those people who are kind of have everything at that point um and everyone you know (laughs) this is a game with the time scales not everyone's there yet and that's okay like it's not expected for everyone to be at their peak because that's just not it's not reasonable like yeah yeah. you know i tell you something somebody um that's had a large influence on me and that was my my dad um he uh he just got an mbe for his services to taekwondo um -hmm. because of everything that he's done with gb um but i think people see the success over the last probably 10 years but they don't know the story that led up to that they don't know um he started off fixing radiators before we, we did a, this workshop in Stoke, where we're from, and I think um, he had a profound impact on uh, influence on me when I was younger. And I saw yeah. he just wasn't smarter than anybody else. wasn't you know didn't have this that, but he was a relentlessly hard worker, and he would just yeah. keep going and going and going and going. So now people see what he's done with GB and how successful they've become but they don't see all the small challenges that he had over the years doing different jobs, going, you know, having to win this battle, win that battle. And I think it was that sustained effort over a period of time that has led him to have the success that he has. And I think probably subconsciously when I was younger, I watched that and I thought I'm going to do that as well. And that was a a key factor in me doing all the things that I've done. And, you know, and have I been hugely successful? I don't know, but I think success is relative. And I look back at what I have done and I think, you know what, I'm happy with it. It's okay. Yeah. It's good enough for me. Yeah. I think, I think another great analogy is you see, you see the world champions on the first place stage. You see that picture. That's all you see of them. You don't see them having really bad days going, doing really badly at training. Um, <laughs> waking up at 5 a.m. And, and doing all these things and just putting in their whole heart and soul and, you know, having failures and feeling down in the dumps and feeling like they're not going to get anywhere. 
you don't see that unless someone makes a movie about you. You just see that person. What? How are they doing in this competition, in this fight? Oh, they're doing well, right? So they must be just a really great person. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't see the, all of the stuff before that. You just see the the end result. Um, and, you know, even... For example, with this this podcast, you you hear us speaking, um, you hear me speaking, but you don't see the person that I was five years ago who couldn't yeah. talk just to one person who just was so shy, so lacking self esteem that he just couldn't say anything because he didn't feel able to and didn't feel like he was competent enough to to speak. It's you don't see that, um, and you don't see those small incremental changes that that i made over the of like the course of five years and the small breakthroughs and the failures and you know you've you've got to be um aware that not everything is a glory moment and that life yeah. can be boring and life can be tough and you just you just push through things and as long as you're going in the right direction and you're making those incremental wins over time um working on yourself you i know a uh, i know a, a, an mma fighter from manchester a kid who i know i know him pretty well uh, i've known him for a long time and he just won the pfl just won a million dollars um at a tournament in america he, he, you know he lives in thailand most of the time yeah. um, but i remember him from 10 12 years ago in the boxing in champs campus boxing gym when he had holes in his shoes just training relentlessly hard and now he's just you know achieving you know the the, the result of all that hard work and he's mm. getting the success but that i think that's the most uh, glaring example i can think of of someone that's just continued to work no matter what over a long period of time and now is getting his just desserts um yeah. i think of people like that who i've known again through martial arts it always comes back to the same thing yeah and you, you've 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 also i mean there's there's a, there's a flip side to that and you know i'm not prescribing everyone to be working every day of every week towards things the, the, the fact that there is that sort of time scale doesn't mean that you have to do everything now but it does mean that you have to do some things mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. like and it's it's not always this um it's great it's great to work and it's great to to be on the grind and to to do things but it's it's also really important to kind of temper yourself and not get too excited because when you try to push yourself too far when you try to push yourself too far too quickly um that's when you you experience those those feelings that nothing's ever going to change because yeah you're not looking at it on a on a long time scale you're not being patient you're not waiting for those small incremental changes over a long period of time to add up um and it's it's really important not to put that pressure on yourself just because you're not at a certain point that you want to be at this time and you know you're not putting in every ounce of everything that you have every single day um you are taking a step back you are thinking about yourself you are um, taking care of your self care and also, you know, making sure that you don't over overwork yourself and burn out. 